Good evening and welcome to this district planning meeting of uh, Malden District Council today, 3rd of March 2022. I'm Councillor Mark Hurd, Chairman of this committee. Um, I'd like to welcome new Councillor Simon Morgan, already uh, a week into his term. Uh, he is... He is the uh, Conservative member for Wickham Bishops and Wooden Ward. I congratulate him on his campaign and welcome him to the district. With the departure of one councillor and the arrival of a new member, I hope to draw a line under the past and look to the future of this hard-working authority, its officers and current members. Chairman. Right. Chairman. Yeah. Um, in, in view of uh, your c comments, can I commend the way that you have um, acted over the last year, 18 months? Thank you very much. And, and actually, I offer my congratulations to the very, very difficult circumstances that the staff have had to operate um, under this. So I do welcome a new start. Well done to them. So, members, uh, this meeting uh, will be streamed live and recorded, and by being present in this meeting, you are given consent uh, to being recorded. This recording will also appear on the Council's website. Um, during each item, please indicate if you wish to speak, and I will then invite you to do so at the appropriate time. As always, I encourage members to keep contributions clear and concise, and when invited to speak, please remain seated and speak clearly. Uh, referring to the agenda papers uh, and ensure that you reference a page or paragraph. The fire exits are marked by the green signs and obviously be aware of the differing floor levels. So, um, members, uh, we'll move on to agenda item two, apologies for absence. Do we have any apologies, please, Tara? Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, apologies have been received from Councillor Beale, Councillor Skeens, Councillor Siddle and Councillor Mrs Stilts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I think that's Councillor Brian Beale. Yeah. Agenda uh, item... Yes. Thank you. Agenda item three, declarations of interest. Members are reminded that they are required to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests, other pecuniary interests or non-pecuniary interests which they know they might have in items of business on the agenda, having regards to paragraph six to eight inclusive of the code of conduct for members. They are reminded that they need to repeat their declarations at the appropriate point in the meeting and leave the room if required under the code of conduct. Unforeseen interests must be declared similarly at the appropriate time. Do I have any interests, please? Councillor Durham. Chairman, thank you. I have a non-pecuniary interest as a member of Essex County Council who are statutory consultees in matters of planning. Thank you. Thank you for that. Councillor Fleming. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, a non-pecuniary as a member of Essex County Council who are statutory consultees. Thank you. Thank you. And Councillor Stamp. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. A member of Essex County Council, non-pecuniary, exactly what the other two councillors have said. Thank you very much. Any other declarations, members? No? Okay. We'll move on to agenda item four, minutes of the previous meeting. It's recommended that the minutes of the meeting of the district planning meeting held on the 19th of January are approved as a true and accurate record. Uh, they're presented for accuracy only. Um, I so move. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Mays, thank you. Any member wish to speak on any matter of accuracy? Can these be agreed by assent? Thank you very much indeed. We move on. We move on to agenda item five, uh, twenty-one slash zero zero nine six one, reserved pages nine to forty-six. Um, the officer presenting the report uh, is Miss Anna Testoglu. Could you present the report, please? Thank you. Thank you, to you, Chairman. <clears throat> so the the application. Uh, relates to let me just uh, relates to the largest of the three sites allocated for development in the North Hayward's Garden suburb, 
referred to in policy S2 as S2D uh, North Hebrides site, which was granted planning consent for a hybrid mixed-use development on appeal on the 25th of October 2019 under the terms of application 15-00419-OUT. The current proposal relates to phase two of the proposed development and in particular the land that is necessary to provide the strategic landscaping and infrastructure elements such as roads, paths, open space and sustainable drainage system features uh, for this phase. This application site is split into two parts. The largest part is located to the north and northeast of Haybridge Wood, which is here, and the smaller part is to the southwest of Haybridge Wood. Um, it should be noted uh, that the details of the relief road, which runs along the northern part of the application site, do not form part of the assessment of the current resident, uh, reserve match application, as these were granted detailed concern as part of the hybrid application. Um, it should be noted that a revised strategic phasing plan was approved on the 14th of January under the terms of application 21 uh, slash 05187 slash DT. The main, re uh, the main revision to the previously approved strategic phasing plan was the inclusion of parcel 10, which is here, and uh, an area to the north of the uh, local centre, which is down here. Uh, this application covers the strategic landscaping for phase two, an application pertaining the strategic um, landscaping and infrastructure elements of phase one, which is the blue, um, was previously approved uh, under the terms of application 21-00384-RES by the District Planning Committee on uh, 30th of September 2021. The key elements of the strategic landscaping and infrastructure covered in this uh, submission are the surrounding, um, the landscaping surroundings of the eastern section of the relief road and Broad Street Green roundabout, the internal spine road, which is here, um, the green corridors uh, surrounding parcels 10, uh, 11 and 12, the second phase of the acoustic barrier, which runs along the relief road on the northern part of the application site. The local equipped area, which is to the south of parcel 12, and the uh, pumping station, also to the south of parcel 12. Uh, the internal road uh, associated to an associated attenuation basins to the north of parcel 8. Um, any pedestrian and cycle links within the site and also the proposed bus stops which are to the south of parcel 10. The hybrid planning application contains a number of conditions requiring either the adherence of matters agreed as part of the outline permission or the submission of further details to be agreed either as part of a reserve match application or a discharge of condition application. This application also seeks permission for the details required by conditions 18 in relation to works to trees and hedgerows, condition 19 in relation to details of the acoustic barrier, condition 27 in relation to the details of bus stops, condition 28 in relation to the details uh, of pedestrian and cycle routes, condition 31 in relation to the overall landscape strategy but not the details of the landscape design and specifications which is part two of this condition, and condition 32 in relation to uh, refuse and recycling. So, as part of the application, a number of technical plans have been submitted, including the landscape proposal. These are closer views of what I've showed you earlier. Um, uh, proposed illustrative sections uh, that show the band treatment and some uh, attenuation basins, um, sections of the basins, um, sections of the band. I'm skipping through those quite quickly. We can come back to them later if you want. Um, uh, some 
general arrangements in relation to the noise band, which include the width of the band along its length, uh, the proposed uh, contours and levels of the noise band, which include the heights of the band, um, the uh, longitudinal sections <laughs> of the band, uh, some plans in relation to the widening of some ditches in between the parcels and around the Haybridge Wood, and then some um, vehicle technical uh, plans, including swept analysis, swept path analysis for uh, articulated vehicles, for buses, uh, for refuse vehicles, uh, general arrangements of the highway, Again, this is the spine road and the secondary road, not the relief road. This was approved as part of the outline permission. Sport levels. Uh, surface and curbing arrangement of the uh, roads proposed within the sites. Highway contour plans. Uh, the proposal also includes some uh, mammal crossing tunnels underneath the spine road and the relief road. This is to allow access of um, uh, mammals from the countryside, which is to the north of the site, to Haybridge Wood. Uh, these are the plants and elevations of the pumping station, uh, the bus stops. This is a detailed plan of the local equipped area of play. And I have also included some photographs uh, of the site. So these are um, views from Broad Street Green Road. This is the S2F site to the south of the application site. This is again from Broad Street Green towards the south and uh, towards the east. This is Haybridge Wood. Um, and some photographs of the uh, surrounding area. So the principle of development of this site has been accepted as part um, as it forms part of the North Haybridge Garden Suburb and part of the approved hybrid application. The strategic landscaping and infrastructure proposed for Phase 2 um, is compliant with the North Haybridge uh, Strategic Master Plan Framework, the North Haybridge Strate Strategic Design Code, the approved design parameter plans and the outline planning permission to which it relates. It is conceded that this second section, uh, second phase, apologies, of the strategic landscaping um, sets out high, uh, well designed, a well designed framework of green spaces and linkages that will ensure that the development as a whole delivers the high quality, vibrant, and distinctive neighbours that the council has envisaged for the garden suburbs. It is also considered that the proposal would be acceptable in terms of impact on nearby heritage assets and the quality of life of existing and future occupiers of the site. Following minor amendments, the development would be acceptable in terms of its impact on the highway network and the highway safety and no objection is raised from the highway authority. The proposed surface water features comply with the approved parameter plans and the overall agreed stra drainage strategy as approved as part of the outline permission. All technical details in relation to the surface water drainage scheme are to be dealt with through um, condition and not as part of this reserve match application. A number of ecological mitigation and enhancement measures have been considered and are, and are secured through the imposition of a condition to ensure that habitats and biodiversity are protected and enhanced. The development is supported by an arboricultural impact assessment, which confirms that the application enables this application enables the retention of a number of trees that they were originally proposed to be removed. So, on the basis of the above, officers recommend approval of the application, uh, subject to conditions on pages 42 to 45 of the agenda. Apologies for the lengthy presentation. Thank you very much indeed. Um, we have one public participant for this planning application. In line with the public participation scheme, I will now invite the agent from Countryside Properties Limited, Mr Kevin Coleman, to read out his submission. Um, do please... Uh, thank you. Okay. Um, 
So Mr Coleman, may I remind you that you are allocated two minutes only for public speaking in accordance with the scheme. Thank you very much. Oh, well, thank you, and, and once again, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, uh, as has just been uh, uh, presented by the officer, um, you'll be aware that this is our, our second uh, strategic infrastructure reserve matters uh, relating primarily to the north uh, eastern part of the site. Um, the similar application that we made for the western part of the site, as you've heard, was approved in September last year. <coughs> So the, the key features of this application, uh, as, as we see it, are the attractive landscape entrance into the site from Broad Street Green Road, um, the tree-lined spine road that extends into the site uh, from Broad Street Green Road, the remainder of the landscaping to the uh, approved relief road, which includes the extensive hedgerow planting uh, along the north side of that, as well as the, the landscape fund on the south side. Um, the application includes new children's play space, um, as well as all of the pedestrian and cycle links that you'd expect. Uh, and this application includes the, uh, the buffer around Haybridge Wood, uh, which is designed to protect, protect the woodland. Uh, overall, it includes uh, extensive new tree and hedgerow planting. And you've just heard uh, the officer mention that the arboricultural report that's in with the application uh, does identify several trees previously identified for removal that we're now able to retain. Uh, so overall, um, the landscaping, the roads, the pedestrian and cycle links uh, are all in accordance with the outline planning permission and with the design code. Again, as the officers just mentioned, so I feel like I'm repeating a lot of what's just been said, for which I apologise. Um, and for those reasons, we hope that the committee will be able to support the application tonight. Thank you very much. OK, thank you very much indeed. So, members, uh, I'll open the debate and invite you to put any questions or make any comments that you wish on the report. Councillor Durham first. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Chairman. Um, it's very good to see this application come before us, uh, and it's actually very pleasing to see that it's largely in accordance with the garden suburb design brief that we were given several years ago, uh, and I don't have a problem with it. But we, we're getting these these reserved matter applications in piecemeal. And for reasons of our five-year land supply, it, it really is in the interest of this authority that the build-out of this site and others happens as soon as possible. So when are we likely to get the reserved matter applications for detailed design and, and other layouts? And, uh, you know, I remind members that the provision of the community facilities that are part of this application are based on the completion and occupation of the homes uh, and therefore it, it honestly can't come soon enough so i would much rather see this get moving rather than having these individual reserve matter applications come to us um, once every couple of months thank you thank you are you able to answer that uh, when we receive these you, Sermon, the the only thing i can say is that an application for the reserve matters residential element has been submitted and is currently under consideration. Thank you very much. Councillor White, next. Um, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, I, actually, I'm very disappointed in this application and I, I'm a bit surprised it's come before us. And I'm, I'm not in agreement with um, the previous speaker because is there a policy on bridleways and new developments in the Malden District? Because I was aware that there was. And... Every single application we raise this, and there's not a single bridle. There is a mention of a bridleway somewhere in the paperwork, but it doesn't say where it's going to go or what it's going to be. And this is one of our policies that the council has decided. This isn't just something we've done overnight. We raised it at the last application, and we were sure that we were told officers were going to address it. So where are they? Thank you. Anna, can you help there, please, bridleways? Yeah, through you, Chairman, this should have been part of the outline permission, the um, the provision of bridal ways. And um, as far as I'm aware, there was no condition imposed by the inspector. I'll the application. 
Right. But, but it's not the point because this is one of our policies that we have as part of granting and it should be a reason why it should wait until they're in there and the developers should show a little bit of goodwill as far as I'm concerned in putting these in. They know our policies and, and for everybody to completely disregard them is just unfair. Mr Lee. Thank you, Chairman. Um, planning permission when it's you know, it's granted by the council and traditionally in a, in a full, which is the one permission. Um, applications such as this are done in two phases, through the outline permission and the reserve matters, but it is one permission. Um, case law is clear, guidance is clear, legislation is clear about certain things need to be required at outline stage and then reserve matters in future will fill them in for better phrases. Um, and as Mr Tashchoglu said, you know, there was no requirement by the inspector for bridal ways to be delivered as part of this development and it was through the outline stage is where the council needed to raise that concern and require it whether or not you agree with the fact there are not bridal ways the fact you agree with other points or don't agree with to a sense it becomes a moot point because this has been accepted as a principle and it's not in the eyes of the planning system appropriate to raise matters such as this at the time of the reserve matters um, it's not about personal opinion it's not about what policies we may adopted later we have to look at what the inspector granted in 2019 and the restrictions and limitations that were put on it and in flip side the, f the freedom that was put on it and there is no requirement for part of this application as Tash was saying through conditions to require a bridal way and any objections to that I would think would be very difficult to do, sustain. Thank you Chairman. Right, thank you. If, if I might I'd just, just like have a supplementary. Move, I'd like to move on because I've got, you've asked two questions Councillor White. Councillor Nunn. Uh, yes, thank you Chairman. Um, the uh... The summary proposal on page 9, uh, although it mentions conditions, it makes no mention of condition 8, but condition 8 appears elsewhere in the paperwork. And if I've read the rest of the paperwork correctly, it seems to suggest that the archaeological condition has already been discharged and that the uh, work that's being proposed through the reserve matters will not impact on the archaeology of the site. Could I have confirmation that that is correct, please? Yes, Mr. Tashoglu, thank you. Through you, Chairman, yes, that's, that's correct. These, these, um, the archaeological um, elements have been uh, discharged by a condition and uh, yes, they have been dealt with. Thank you for the explanation. So, so the work that's being proposed here, the reserve matters, will have no further archaeological impact. Through you, Chairman. Yes, that was all assessed, and I mean, all whatever was whatever works had to be done, any excavation works in relation to archaeology have been done and have been uh, dealt with. So, this this scheme will not um, will not go beyond what was approved under the outline permission where this condition was imposed. So it won't, it won't extend beyond the, um, the application side the, of the hybrid application. So no further, no further archaeological um, assessment would be required. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Channer. Uh, thank you, Chairman, very much. Um, Page 44, where we get onto the conditions, condition four and five. I'm sorry, Chairman, but they look to me as though they're the same condition regarding the leap. I've looked at it and I can't see any differentiation in the wording. So it looks like there's been a duplication there. And then my question is, if we have a duplication of conditions regarding the leap, what condition may have been left off? And regarding the leap, uh, in fact, I'm now moved to page 25 and I'm looking at... Um, 5.2.42 it seems a pumping station is going to be located in close proximity to the leap the report is not clear on the detail of how close this structure is to the leap but it makes it quite clear that this is not ideal that the structure would be located there in such close proximity to the area of play and it mentions going to be enclosed by a high brick wall um, and on balance, it seems to be that this is being seen to be reasonable. Could I perhaps see or uh, be given information as to regarding the distance of the pumping station from the perimeter of the leap? And how high is the brick wall we're talking about? And have we got any, um, have we got any indication or design within the plan submitted 
to see um, what this might look like on the ground. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Ms. Chashoglu. Yeah, through you, Chairman. Um, apologies for the duplication, first of all, of the of the condition. There was no condition, um, further condition to be added or missed from the duplication. Um, in relation to the pumping station, uh, there is a 15 meter gap between the the pumping station and, and any residential element. Um, in particular, to the loop, I can I can have a look and come back to you in that. Yeah, I have a further question then, please. Should a condition be on this um, approval then regarding the pumping station and the brick rule referred to? Because it does make reference to it, and that's what I thought might be the missing condition. I'm not saying it should be, but I wondered if it was surrounding the pumping station and the brick wall that's going to be applied to, I presume, have a safety aspect regarding the closeness to the leap. Through you, Chairman. Uh, there is a condition, condition one, that includes all the plans, includes the plans that they make refer the, the, the elevation plans of the pumping station of the 1.8 meter high wall around the pumping station, which I've shown you earlier in the presentation. So it is conditioned to be installed, uh, erected, sir. Okay, and that's enough, is it? The Chairman, obviously, due to the replication, the same condition uh, would advise if members do grant permission, obviously, we remove the uh, duplicate condition. Yeah. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Councillor, Councillor Hull. Thank you. Um, I'm too really disappointed that there's no bridleways put in here. And how in the future are we going to be able to um, rectify this? Because even when they are put in, plan permission, that we don't, they, they don't materialise. Well, I think I think that question has been answered about bridleways, and it's not about this application. So, do you have any other question? I just don't understand why it's always they're just always left out and it should have been uh, um, part of the planning. OK, Mr. Lee. Dear you, Chairman. Um, as I said, you know, this was something that should have been dealt with that outline, you know, unfortunately it wasn't. Um, we revisit it at the various phases of the same application, but you're going to be getting the same argument in relation to the 2019. It was, it was because... on the outline. It definitely was because we both brought it up. We definitely but... brought it up. Yeah, it, 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 the, remembering that the 2000 and this is the out this is the appeal decision based from the 2015 application not the decision that officers recommend for approval of members granted in 2019 the inspector didn't put a condition on in relation to bridleways therefore as you know that's been taken away from us and however many frustrated of, uh, members may feel officers may feel the public may feel whatever we are tied by what the inspector imposed as on the appeal decision and as said you know you, members you're right you do bring it up on uh, every application but you're going to hear the same thing from officers unfortunately could we could we members please one, one at a time please the question has been answered councillor edwards thank you chairman as ward member i have three questions if i may although it does say great cotton parish but cambridge um Firstly, in 3.18, it's 13. Page 13, thank it, you. Uh, 3.18 is to, um, this current application is seeks to discharge the details of condition 18 of the original application 419. The condition 18 is the removal of trees. Can I just have clarification that this ceases, there's no more trees to be dislodged or taken out, just to confirm, Mr. if we're going, we're, going to, we're going to discharge that condition? Yeah, through you, Chairman. <clears throat> First of all, is the discharge of condition in relation to this phase of the development, not the whole site, first of all. And um, as I said, the updated agricultural report that's been submitted with this application to revise the one that was approved as part of the outline application confirms that not only there's going to be no further loss of trees, but there are, I think, seven of them that they were originally proposed to be removed and they are now proposed to be retained. Uh, can I come back on um, condition 18? No trees or hedgerows within the site, that's the whole site, will be failed. 3.18, this current reserve matter application seeks to discharge the details in condition 18. So that's the whole site. 
Oh, I've read that wrong. See, Chairman, this is a phased application. So this application relates to the area that it says read as part of this application rather than the entire site. Um, Sorry, Chairman. The condition 18 in the original uh, uh, appro uh, approval is no trees or hedgerows will be held back. And you're trying now to discharge that condition, but it applies to the whole site. Yes, yeah. sure, through you, Chairman. When you when when you read the uh, within the report at the end of the paragraph that, that I'm referring to, condition 18, I say that the Carol Reserve Matters application seeks to discharge the details of condition 18 in relation to phase two. two. Uh, a, a, a discharge of condition application was was uh, determined in relation to phase one as well. So we have discharged this condition in really as a, again this application is to be determined in different phases like there are five different phases so for each phase there's going to be a discharge a partial discharge of of some conditions such as condition 18 so it does not relate to the whole site is in relation to Sorry. phase two only okay thank you can i next question yes next question yes. um playground equipment can i ask who is maintaining that or from not just from a repair point of view but from a health and safety in terms of playground equipment has to have yeah. a certification yeah. uh, through you chairman that would have been uh, part of the section 06 agreed as part of the outline permission for all leaps within the site um maintenance and management of the leaps would have been part of that not as part of a condition Yes, Chairman, if I come back, but who is actually going oh, to... I was going to say, is, is that... Who's going to maintain it? Properties? Do you, Chairman, off the cuff, obviously, yeah. won't have that information. Oh, it wouldn't yeah. be a material <laughs> consideration for the determination of this application anyway, because it's a requirement through the Section 106 okay. of the outline stage. So the requirement right. is to provide it. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and finally, uh, Chairman, um, for the Chair, um, cycle links from the relief road into Broad Street Green. Where are they actually going to hit Broad Street Green, bearing in mind... Broad Street Green does not have cycle lanes. Yes, please. Through you, Chairman. Uh, we can only we can only determine what's within the red line of the application. There is part of Broad Street Green that is included within the application site, and there are works to be done in this part of Broad Street Green Road. Um, I mean, whatever is beyond that is, is outside the application site. So where would cycle links link up to, to, to the rest of Haybridge? Mr. Lee. The Chairman, um, as Ms. Tash Dudley said, we can only worry about the application site and we have yeah. facilitated the potential for that. Within the site, there is the permeability through cycles, um, whether or not there's a connection outside of that isn't really a consideration for this application. This application can only worry about itself, washing its own face and hopefully try and provide something that adds betterment to the area, but not even if it can't, unfortunately, maybe facilitate anything outside of that. Thank you. OK, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Lagan. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, there's, I've got a couple of questions and a comment, it's not surprising. Um, for the, the noise buttons um, that are going to be put in, and I see that the size of the trees that are on top of the band, do they form part of the acoustic curtain? Through Terman, the, the acoustic barrier would be the band and, uh, um, and an acoustic fence, but the details of the, the landscaping does not form part of the uh, noise attenuation, uh, but also the details of that are not to be approved as part of this permission, of this application. I was just a bit worried because I'd hope that they'd plant the mature trees that they are with the four people who are going to live here on this schematic that I'm looking at, rather than the little tiddly ones that are going to take generations to grow because that's something that we need for, for sound and, and carbon. The second one is, um, it does link a little bit to the bridleways, yeah, and I have a slight area of disappointment, and I'm sure Mr Lee will, will take great pleasure in shooting me down in flames, and that's fine, um, but we've got professional officers, and why didn't it get raised earlier on? because you know how passionate certain members are about these types of things. And we should think about the things that are important for the members that represent the communities and that we should bring those forward. It's not for us to do that. 
it's for us to, to, to debate it here. And you can say it's not that the planning inspector didn't think of that. That's great. My point is, let's think about all of these things. Because as I'm sitting here, and I don't mean to sound flippant, because this has been decided. I know this is being built out, and you know that these massive estates, however you want to dress them up as, um, <clears throat> I don't think they're the, the solution to the problem long term. But at the moment, I can just see somebody cycling around there on a push bike, and if you want to ride your horse, you can go through there, but you can't go anywhere else. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I'd never take joy in shooting a member down firstly, and I hope members. <laughs> um, uh, but what I would say is that, um, and this sounds like I'm washing my hands, and I don't mean to be, but these schemes didn't sit under me in 2015, <laughs> and I honestly can't comment on that because I wasn't pre uh, I was I worked to the council, but they sat under the planning policy team. The strategic applications did at the time. I had no involvement really in any of these, and I honestly have no input or knowledge on the topic. And to be honest, none of the officers that were there then are here now, so I honestly can't comment on that. Unfortunately, right. thanks. Okay, Councillor Thank Fleming you. next. Thank you, Chair. Um, turning to page twenty nine, um, five point six point three. Um, it refers to rainwater butts permeable paving to private driveways. Given that this is a critical drainage area, how, how do we ensure that in five years' time all of those driveways haven't been paved over? Do you know if the developer has plans to sort of covenant, put covenants on the development? Thank you. Is it five six? Was, yeah, is it paragraph yeah, five six three? Yeah, five six three. I heard the page, but I didn't get the Whatever has been submitted as part of the uh, sustainable drainage strategy, as part of this application or any previous application or any future application, is being conditioned through um, its application that is being determined. So, like for this one, all of the um, supportive information that has been submitted with the application have been conditioned, so the application will have to comply with them. Um, the, the planning system does not control anything that goes beyond the condition, so any covenants are not um, material planning consideration. Yeah, but you would, exactly, yeah, you would, you, you would, require, you, you would require these elements to be uh, maintained in perpetuity as you would for, like, attenuation basins and other drainage system um, features. Okay, I'd like to come back on that. Thank you, Chair. Um, could we put an informative on, just something about uh, the, asking the developer to, to covenant? Because I know a lot of developers are very strict on their schemes. You have to have, you know, in some developments, doors of certain colours, because... You know, you, you do see it in new developments, even around Malden, where originally it was a permeable structure, and then down the line it's paved over, and then you get into surface water drainage issues. So that I think that would be beneficial. Thank you. Okay. Yes, we've got that. Thank you. Count, um, Councillor Beale. Thank you, Chair. I'm sure the officer is definitely not old enough to remember death rates 2000. But, uh, what is the point in having cycleways if they come to a dead end? What is the going rate for motorists helping over the cyclists? There's no point in having cycleways if they're just going to stop at the boundary. What a nonsense. Well, I, I don't... Well, I don't... Yeah. 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 Right. Um, I think, I think the first thing is, I don't think we can go beyond the bounds of the site to start with. Um, hedgehog tunnels yes. and, uh, yes. yes, they are present, yes. Oh. yes. Okay. <laughs> Councillor, yes. Um, are we allowed to ask the developers, seeing as one's actually sitting here now, 
Cambridge Parish Council has asked, could we bring forward the allocation of the uh, allotments <coughs> so that one, it would give the buffer between Hayward Way and the new houses being built, plus it means that the actual allotments would be uh, established from existing residents as a part of the all the new things coming in. Um, and what was the other thing? Okay, well, perhaps we'll answer that. Is it possible to, to do that, Ms. Chester or Glue? Yeah, through you, Chairman. I mean, the, the allotments are not part of this current application. They're outside the application site, the current application right. site. They form part of the subsequent. The allotments are. Oh, sorry. Yeah, here. This is. This is... I, I think that's outside this application. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's, it's beyond the red line. Councillor Swain. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. A um, couple of uh, things. One concerns the um, ring road and the noise from it. Um, yeah. I understand that on the inner side there is um, fencing and um, green barrier and all this sort of thing. Um, but uh, presumably this road is above the normal of the surrounding ground area and I wonder where, whether there's much um, uh, what should we say much there to stop the noise of the ring road going out into the countryside beyond um, which you need a, a, a noise barrier on the outside of the road as well as um, uh, attenuation on, on the inside um, particularly if the road is, is above the normal level. My, my second point is on SUDS, um, and we know of the concern about um, excess water um, going off a site in, in Haybridge. Um, I assume that the County Council flood uh, people will uh, have assessed the, um, uh, what should we say, the capacity of the SUDS on this site to do what they're supposed to do. Um, but my, my quest further question is, um, it, when the assessment of SUDS is made by the developer or by the Essex flood people, do they make an estimate of how long, on average, during a year, those areas are going to be unusable for other purposes? I mean, they're usually projected as being part of the green space or recreational area, um, but that's of no use if they are soggy for half the, half the year. Okay, well, do you want to answer yeah. the first part? Yeah, through you, Chairman. Um, this current application doesn't relate to the ring road. That was already granted permission at outline stage, so that matter's already been looked at by the inspector and not for consideration as part of this application. In relation to the SUDS point, um, it, it's a bit of a question about how long is a piece of string, because, you know, quite often, actually, while they may be put forward as part of the green infrastructure, etc., in usable places, actually, when we look at the demand and the requirements of a site and an area as officers and as local authority we don't include that we look at what is needed for it stand alone and we would discount that and at times we do include them when there is evidence that they would be quite minimal but generally no because it's not it's like a betterment of having this green space rather than actually being a requirement mm. i think i think the question was is there an estimate about the unusability of it or, or not that was the question it's not necessarily this one, is it? No, Theo Chairman, we haven't got that information because no. it meets its requirement for public open space without that. So it's a betterment of space rather than a necessity. Thank you, Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Stamp. Uh, yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, could I ask whose responsibility it is to actually go on site and sign off these conditions? And I'll, I'll back that up with something that's happening in one of the sites in Burnham on Crouch. It's all well and good sitting here and saying we're going to plant all these lovely trees and they're going to be here. But if you plant them at the wrong time of the year and you don't water them, they die. Uh, it states quite clearly before Mr Lee comes in and says it's a condition, it has to be replaced, etc. I understand all that. I can read and I understand all that. I want to know who is actually going to go out if this authority has got the 
um, staffing to be able to go out and check these conditions and who goes out and signs it all off in the end because what we're experiencing finding out is that the planting that should have been planted throughout the scheme suddenly appears to be 20,000 trees going on in six weeks or a month so I wouldn't like this to happen in any other, any other the sites that are you know coming to fruition now uh, and then obviously it then <laughs> and it's going to go to an enforcement and rather than things to go to enforcement it'd be better if this authority has the manpower to go and check check them off and sign the conditions off properly and i'm going to go back to the suds uh, exactly what mr lee says we've got the same thing it was agreed this beautiful th three tier suds well, now we're ended up with a pond that's full of rubbish and absolutely a disgrace so who is monitoring when these sites are being built out before the end Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I know it's not relevant to this, but it's relevant to all of these sites. Gen general question, and I, uh, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Uh, Lee, I would appreciate an answer. Um, I know you can, you'll say no to one. me. The answer is no one. We don't have a monitoring officer. We, if we receive a complaint about enforcement, we discharge the conditions. If that's submitted as required prior to commencement or you know, prior implementation, if we receive a complaint, they'll be investigated. But just like most authorities I know, we do not have a monitoring officer in relation to the... Uh, process of conditions and how they come forward um unfortunately that is the council decision but i don't think it's really a debate for this application but that is the situation the council is in relation to resources thank you chairman i, I didn't really I, expect a debate through you chair um but it, it's actually highlights the the issues that we're all going to these big sites are being uh, built out now yeah, and look at the mess we're going to be in. They were supposed to be high quality. It was sold through the LDP. They were high quality sites, and they're not materialising like that. And that's reflecting on this district. And if we have policies like what the bridleways was, they should have been put in, and they shouldn't be missed, and it shouldn't just be putting down, you know, to somebody else's responsibility. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. I think uh, that it's something that you may want to raise at your at your local planning meetings. Uh, well, you raised it. Don't worry. Thank okay. you. All right. Thank you. Um, Councillor uh, Edwards, and then I'll come back to Councillor Bill. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, it's not a question. Um, it's uh, I still have a major concern with traffic, uh, road um, construction traffic coming out onto Broad Street Green, as on Maypole Road we had discussed last time. But I do see that there's wheel washes and et cetera being put in, but construction traffic is still going to come through Haybridge, and that's my concern. Thank you. Okay, I, I, I suspect this may be a highways matter, but uh, are we able to answer that, please? Yeah, through you, Chairman. Yeah, that, that cannot be controlled under this, this application. Oh, we've determined, the, the, the District Committee determined the application in relation to the construction access points a few months ago, yeah. and they've approved um, the application. That was that, that included a construction access point onto Broad Street Green Road and a construction access point onto Maple Road. And they do have a life for two maximum of two years, so you cannot... Mm -hmm. Okay. Mr. Lee. Thank you, Chairman. As uh, Ms. Tash Jogu said, you know, the District Committee approved that a couple of months ago. That isn't part of this consideration. If members wish to discuss that, that should have been brought up at the time. This application is specifically for these, not for the accesses through construction. Thank you, Chairman. Right. Um, thanks, members. Please. Councillor Fluker. 
Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Um, I just really want to just drill into the construction phase, and I think anybody that's driven past any of the major sites in the district over the last couple of days will probably join me in querying the state of the roads. Um, it always concerns me, Chairman, when we have these multi-layered applications, although you know, I do take comfort in the fact that the, the reserve matters application is in. Um, but I wanted to go to condition one. Um, the report mentions wheel washing, but it, under condition one, it does mention the construction environmental uh, management plan, which I would expect to see it there. And it also doesn't mention any of the decision notices or the previous applications, although these are mentioned in the report. So with the thing that I've mentioned before, Chairman, is, is the conditions of the road and the requirement of the, uh, the developers to keep the roads clear of mud and debris and detritus. Now... We speak to wheel washing, but we don't talk to this. So, Chairman, I, you know, if it's wrapped up in this somewhere and it can be enforced, I'm happy. But knowing what's gone on in the past with these multi-layered applications, Chairman, during this phase of the scheme, I would like to see a condition that actually covers the cleaning of the road throughout the construction phase, because you've got three entrances to this site and the weather in the last couple of days has highlighted what can happen. So, Chairman, I would I would propose that. Normally at this time, I can't see Mr Coleman sitting in the corner, but hopefully he's nodding his head over there in agreement with me. But I would like to see something in there, Chairman, quite clearly as a condition that 100 metres either side of these entrances are kept clean for this phase. Otherwise, I fear, Chairman, that whilst the works are being carried out for this phase, they won't do it, but they will for the general construction phase. Did you get that, Chairman? I'm sure you could summarise that. In yes, I was, uh, I was writing it down, yes. Uh, so, uh, who, who's going to answer this? Mr Tashoglu, yeah. Thank you. So, the, the question is, can we put a condition in? Yeah, through you, Chairman. We have already determined, as, as I said earlier, we have already determined the application for the construction access points. There is no proposal for construction access point as part of this, this reserve matter application. When we've considered the two construction access points, I think it was a couple of months ago, we have imposed a condition in relation to well washing facilities um, <laughs> and, 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 and other um, required um, precautions not to have an impact onto the existing highway network. Um, th there is also a condition that has been discharged in relation to construction um, traffic and construction management, um, and this is part of a discharge of construction application that we have already determined. So this is not an application uh, that we would be able to impose such condition because it doesn't involve construction access points. So, if I could just come back based on what Ms Tascalou has just said. Chairman, this, this committee agreed quite clearly, and we spoke of 100 metres either side of these entrance points. As a condition, they would be kept clear of mud, debris and detritus. I remember this word, detritus. And we agreed that. Now, perhaps Ms Tascalou could confirm whether or not that actual condition is in there because I don't think she did. So if it's it. if it's dropped off, then I'm afraid we've got a serious. Yeah, through you, yeah, through you, Chairman. I'm referring to planning application twenty one slash zero zero seven eight eight, which was which related to uh, the construction access points, and yeah, following the um, following the debate here, an additional condition was imposed in that respect. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's not as part. It's not part of this application again. Chairman, I think the, the clarity I'm looking for, Chairman, is, is to make sure that that condition is in there. And if it's not, I still think we can add it to this because it's still relying on those entrances. But you know, Chairman, I'll happily give way to anybody else, and perhaps right. the officer can answer us tomorrow with that condition and confirm can we say, that it's can in we, there. Can we say where this condition is? I can't seem to see it here. Yeah, the reason. Chairman, there is Members, no such, please, can I just have some... There is no such condition imposed to this application. Yeah, it, it was imposed to the access point, Yeah, which was determined. And as I said, following the debate, we have imposed this condition. Finally, Chairman, if you don't mind, this report is silent in relation to keeping the road clear, but it does speak to wheel washing. 
So I take great comfort in that, and I will go and check it, Chairman, and I'll come back to you. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Chairman. Yep. Through you, Tim. It talks about wheel washing in the section that I, I believe that's what you're referring to, in the section that I replied to the comments raised by the highway, uh, sorry, the, hey, yeah, the parish. Um, so again, in, in, in my response, I made reference to this permission about the construction access points. This, this permission does not relate with the, does not involve any construction access point, so it would be irrelevant to impose such condition into this permission. It wouldn't meet the six tests. Um, it's, yeah, so all I'm saying, all, in my response to, to the Paris, um, I've, I've explained that this was included into the permission in relation to the access points, construction access points. Chairman, but there was one other point, and that was under condition one, and I did ask why the construction environment uh, management plan wasn't mentioned. I mean, we, we mentioned badges and bats, but we don't mention something which is terribly important to the, the residents, Chairman, and not the mammals. Support the mammals. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, through you, Thurman. Again, it, it has not been included. It has not been included because Sorry, it doesn't. Anna. Through you, Chairman. Um, the condition one relates to the plans and documents that are submitted as part of this application. Conditions, details, etc., that are submitted under applica other applications are not a consideration for this application. They do not form of any content of condition one. That is why documents that have been approved under separate applications or under di discharge conditions are not listed here because they are not relevant to this application. This list of plans and then subsequent list of documents relates solely to the application we're debating tonight. We are here to discuss a relatively small aspect of a very large development and all the other considerations are not for consideration or debate tonight and, and they will not and cannot form part of the conditions that we impose on a, any of this application. Thank you, Chairman. Right. Chairman. If I can come back, then I'd propose that we uh, agree the officer's recommendation and leave with that. All right, I've got one other speaker, Ms. Councillor Durham. Yeah, thank you. We, we, we were in danger of going dangerously off piste. Yeah. Um, uh, I think we've established that everything to do with the cleanliness of the road was dealt with in the previous application. I remember both myself and Councillor Fluker going into great detail about wheel washing, keeping the road clear of mud and indeed dust and debris uh, it, during the summer months. Now, if the road today and over the last few days is muddy, then there's a breach in that condition that was set in the last time. So I would hope that that breach is being looked at. So I accept the fact that it's not part of this, but there is an extant reserve matters uh, permission that involves keeping the roads clear. And if the roads aren't clear, they're in breach of that application, not this one. So, would, would you like to... No, no nothing, okay, all right, okay. Am I wrong? I don't, I don't yes. know. Really all right. I have no idea because I've not been driving down the road, so yeah, but in right. principle, I don't... Okay, yeah, I've got no members, we, we have had a proposal which was uh, proposed by Councillor Fluker and seconded by uh, Councillor Fleming. Um, Is that with the deletion of government? Yes, and, and that, is, that is with the deleted uh, uh, repetition on one of the conditions. Okay, so, so the, um, the proposal is to uh, recommend approval. Is that agreed? That is passed then. Agenda item seven. Uh, just bear with me a moment, members. Yeah, no, that's fine. Right. Fine. Thank you. Yes, Councillor Edwards. I'm sorry, I don't agree. I abstain. Can that be noted? Your dis yes, your abstention is noted. And actually, I'll, I'll abstain as well, please. Well, I think it's already been agreed, members, so... It won't, it won't change a decision, but just I don't agree with it. I, I said note, no. I will note your dissensions. Thank you. Uh, any other business that the chairman of the committee decides are urgent? I have none. Members and officers, I thank you for your contributions this evening. I draw the meeting to a close at 2029. Please do not uh, engage in any further discussion on this forum, leaving the meeting pro promptly 
uh, and I bid those watching our streaming service a very good night and thank you.